Hi Legacy Builders, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jen McNeely with JWM Designs and Marketing. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the five ways you can protect your business from liability. Now, if you're new to my channel, I like to talk and provide tips and tools and ideas for current and aspiring business owners that I believe will help you maximize your time and resources. As I meet with entrepreneurs and solopreneurs, both online and in person, one common concern I hear from them is how to protect themselves and their businesses from liability. Generally, to be liable for something means that you can be held financially responsible for an event or an incident that occurs due to something you did or failed to do. Think of it this way. If an action taken by your company negatively alters another person's life or business, they can sue your company. While I can't go over every way that a business owner can protect their business, in this video, I wanna highlight my top five tips to get you started. Why now? For many new business owners, the concept of liability is relatively new to them. Conceivably, for most of you watching, you've probably worked for a corporation that had a legal department that handled issues related to protecting the business from lawsuits and other business and legal compliance matters. But now that you're operating your own business, you need to be aware of essential compliance requirements and regulations. Unfortunately, the I didn't know about that response just won't cut it anymore. But don't be dismayed. There are so many resources available to you and I hope that this video will provide you with an initial roadmap to get you started. So let's get into it. Unless you're going into business with someone else, you will wear many hats when you first start out as an entrepreneur. You will have to be the CEO, the CFO, the administrator, HR department, marketing, and so on. When you work for yourself, it is your responsibility to keep things running smoothly. As part of your ongoing duties, you have to take whatever steps to limit risk to your business and your personal interests. Now, before I give you tips on ways to limit risk in your business, I want to explain the four main risk categories you need to watch for. Financial risk. Financial risks are risks related to defaulting on financial obligations with lenders or creditors. For example, defaulting on a loan, foreclosure, failing to pay rent. Business sustainability risk. Business sustainability risk occurs when the business cannot generate enough cash flow to support the operation. For example, you can't pay your vendors for supplies or your service providers to do whatever it is that your business does. Those are business sustainability risks. General systematic risks. General systematic risks are risks applicable to all businesses regardless of your industry. An example of a general systematic risk would be natural disasters, a recession, a pandemic, or anything like that, or a military conflict. Those are things that are general systemic risk. The fourth type is an industry systematic risk. Industry systematic risks are risks that are applicable to businesses within your specific industry. An example of an industry systematic risk would be a new government regulation that, that outlaws your product or your service or requires additional hoops for you to be able to provide your product or service. So how can you as a business owner combat these risks? First, create a separate legal entity. In my opinion, creating a separate legal entity for your business is by far the most important and significant step that you can take to protecting your business from liability. This step is vital for so many reasons, but the main one, honestly, is liability protection. I've done a few videos in the past explaining the most common types of business entities and the pros and cons. If you're familiar with my channel, you know that I am a big fan of limited liability companies, LLCs. By default, if you have not formally established your business by registering with your state, you are operating what's called a sole proprietorship or a general partnership if you are in business with another person. You can be held liable under these two business structures if your company gets sued. More specifically, if you are found at fault, your personal assets like your home, bank accounts, savings accounts, your personal property, all of those items can be seized to pay any court judgment against you. 
However, as the name suggests, having an LLC, a limited liability company, will limit your liability to your business if your business is sued. That is because an LLC is legally recognized as a separate entity. Each state has specific rules as to how and where you can register your business, and I encourage you to speak with a legal professional that is licensed in your state to ask additional questions as to what you need to do to get your business registered. A quick word of caution. You can lose your liability protection with your LLC if you are not diligent in operating the company separate from your personal interests. What do I mean by that? Things like personally guaranteeing a business loan, signing a contract in your name and not in the name of your business, using your company to commit a crime, not using separate accounts for your business and your personal finances, or failing to file the annual registration documents for your business, those are all things that could cause you to lose the protection of a limited liability company. So keep that in mind as you're operating your business. Number two, invest in professional help. I am all about DIY for many aspects of starting and running a business. I do a lot of it myself. However, some tasks require the expertise of skilled professionals. For example, when it comes to legal or accounting matters, it is always a good idea to seek professional assistance to comply with the rules and regulations associated with your business. Now, I know that it can be tempting to think that as an entrepreneur, you can take on all the responsibilities that come with starting a business. But do you really want to take a chance of potentially getting it wrong? Taking control of your business by delegating specialized tasks that are outside of your realm of knowledge or expertise is not only a smart move, it provides an extra layer of protection for you and your business. Most professional service providers like accountants, lawyers, and insurance brokers, they're highly regulated and they're required to maintain high professional standards and can be held responsible for failure to meet those standards. Most states require professional service providers to register and maintain licenses to operate within the state. To find professional business help, you can check with your state's governing boards for those professional organizations and associations to access a list of registered service providers. In addition, look for reviews online and with local organizations to find professionals specializing in your industry. While I understand hiring a lawyer or an accountant is a significant investment when you're just starting out, it is well worth the peace of mind that you get when you know that your business is founded on a solid structure. Number three, customer responses. Have you ever gotten a bad review online or a customer demanded a refund when you did not believe the situation even warranted issuing one? It may be tempting to ignore customer complaints online or negative reviews, but it's never a good idea to leave those sorts of matters unresolved. Most lawsuits against businesses occur when customers feel that a company has not adequately responded to their concerns. A surefire way to escalate a complaint to a full-on case is to leave a customer feeling ignored and mistreated. Now, while I'm not an advocate for saying the customer is always right, I do believe that as a business owner, you have to be professional and seek some sort of resolution when you receive a customer complaint. Sometimes, simply explaining the extenuating circumstances which led up to the conflict can help alleviate any negative feelings that the customer may have against you or your business. Now, other times, you may need to respectfully disagree with how the customer interpreted the situation while at the same time extending an olive branch in the form of a discount or a refund to resolve the conflict. After investigating the merits of the customer's criticism, it could very well be that they have a valid point. You may need to make some procedural changes to correct the issue that came up so that you don't repeat that for the next customer. You also need to be prepared to take responsibility when you fail to meet the customer's expectations. That can happen to anyone regardless of the company's size or how long the company has been in business. My biggest takeaway is that you can't let conflict go unaddressed. Face it, address it, and then move on. The worst thing you could do is ignore it. Number four, 
Contract is king. When you run a business, you will encounter several types of contracts. For example, if your company provides a service, you will likely have a services contract for your customers. If you decide to hire a full-time employee or an independent contractor, you need an employment contract or a work for hire agreement. You will likely need a vendor or a supply contract if you use a wholesale vendor for supplies. You'll probably have to have a lease or a rental agreement if you rent space to operate your business. Finally, if you run a website for your company, you'll need to include a website user agreement to the site to comply with most state and federal regulations. If you learn nothing from me, please, for the sake of your business, don't use a one-size-fits-all contract that you downloaded from the internet. I often see it and I can't tell you how much these internet contracts put you and your business at risk. Hiring a professional service provider like an attorney to help you organize and structure your business is vital. When it comes to contracts, it can mean the life or death of your business. Contracts are the rules of the road for any relationship your business has with other customers, companies, or individuals. They help to reduce disputes and give you a roadmap for how to resolve conflicts should one arise. They put everyone on the same page concerning the rules, the duties, the responsibilities of each of the parties who are signatories to the contract. And if a dispute does require a court to intervene, a judge will look at the four corners of that contract when making a decision about liability and who's at fault. Do not skimp on making sure your contract is solid. Now here's a side note. Always get contracts in writing. Do not rely on memory or the word of anyone to fulfill their end of the bargain. In most instances, a judge will not allow evidence of any verbal agreement to be presented when resolving a contract dispute. If it's not in writing, it didn't happen. Number five, protect your data. When protecting your company's data, there are two types of data that I'm referring to. The first type is the data that you receive from your customers, your vendors, your partners, third parties who are not actually a part of your company. The data that I'm talking about are things like credit card numbers and other personal identifying information. Those items should be encrypted and kept on secure servers loaded with antivirus and other security software. Having monthly backup files to maintain data should your system be hacked or inoperable is also very important. Data breaches happen more often than you think, and it's your responsibility as a business owner to protect the sensitive information that you receive from third parties. In addition, your business can be sued for failure to take measures to protect the personal and financial information of your customers, vendors, and suppliers. The second type of data protection is the data that's specific to your internal workings for your business. This includes the company's intellectual property assets, client lists, trade secrets, or any internal methodology that the company used or came up with. Some ways to protect this sort of data are limiting access to it, registering your intellectual property assets with the correct federal agency, and using confidentiality agreements to keep private information from being widely shared outside of your company. Here's a bonus tip. If you can swing it, I encourage you to get business insurance. Although it's not required to start or operate a business, having business liability insurance can go a long way to protecting your financial future should a dispute arise. Now, there are different types of insurance policies based on your industry and your business needs. A general liability policy, they generally protect against personal injury, advertising, defamation type claims, negligence, or property damage claims. And that's probably about all you need as a small business when you're first getting started. However, you may need a more robust policy if you manufacture products or if you provide professional services like a lawyer or an accountant. I encourage you to do some research for yourself based on your industry and then contact an insurance bro broker to get additional details on a policy that would work for you and your needs. Now you may be thinking, Jen, this is all well and good, but my business is small and it's new. I don't need to be concerned about liability insurance until I make a profit. I hate to break it to you, but that is not true. 
In a recent study, approximately 43% of small businesses are threatened with a lawsuit and roughly 36% to 53% of small businesses are sued every year. I don't say this to scare you, but to make you see that it's never a bad idea to alleviate risk in your business, regardless of your size or how long you've been in existence. After getting your business off the ground, I know the last thing that you want to do is deal with a lawsuit. So today my goal was to get your mind thinking about ways to avoid that outcome. It's never too early to protect yourself from liability. So let's recap. In this video, I talked about the four types of risk associated with operating a business and gave you five ways that you can reduce those risks for yourself. Those tips included creating a separate legal entity, hiring professional service providers for tasks that are outside the realm of your knowledge and expertise, responding to customer feedback and concerns regardless of whether it's positive or negative, using solid contracts tailored for your business, protecting your customers and your business's data, and as a bonus tip, obtaining some form of business insurance. While this list is not comprehensive by any stretch of the imagination, it is a solid starting point for any entrepreneur. Your action steps are to review the tips I discussed in this video and take inventory of where you are in your business. Look at your contracts, make sure that your business is structurally sound and hire help where needed. Don't wait to get started protecting your business after you've received a lawsuit or a complaint. Start today. All right, guys, I hope you're finding these videos enjoyable and helpful as you continue to navigate the process of becoming an entrepreneur. I am right here with you, rooting for you, going through the same process as you are, transitioning from full-time employee to full-time entrepreneur. If you have any questions or thoughts about this video or videos that you'd like to see in the future, please leave me a message in the comment box. I love hearing from you guys. I love responding to you and interacting with you. Also, check out my blog post on this topic on my website, jwmdesigns.com, to get a transcript of the materials discussed in this video. Remember that you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and all of my handles to those sites are listed in the description box below as well as on the screen. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and you've learned something that will help you grow your business, don't forget to like this video and be sure to subscribe to my channel to get alerts on when I post new content. My goal is to give you guys tools, tips, advice, things that helped me as an entrepreneur and I hope that they help you as well. I am all about you guys building your legacies together. We are legacy builders and that means we take action. So until next time, keep building y'all.